not on your watch. Hey everybody, want to learn how to get your product on the shelves in big box stores? We are back live at Luva Bella for the second time with Marissa Sergi. Thanks for being a part of the Deal Live Marketing Show. Hey Ralph, thanks for dropping by, really appreciate it. We have some special guests today. So we're gonna talk with Marissa Sergi, fresh off of Deal Live a few months ago and see what she's been up to in the meanwhile and some really big stuff. Uh, her Redhead Wine brand is now on the shelves at Walmart. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that, uh, some other fun stuff. We have David Moliterno, he is a local um, guy that owns his own insurance agency, but is also running for a trustee in Boardman, Ohio. So we're going to talk about some last minute tips and strategy that the people that are running for political office can do in order to help get their name out. And it goes much beyond that sign in the yard. Oh, definitely. I did a garage sale like last weekend and we were all excited about it. We were out putting signs in yards. And then I realized like it was just got caught in a very noisy sea because of all the political signs. Mm -hmm. um, in any case, too, we are actually going to do our first Facebook Live giveaway today on the show. So we've got a couple things that we want to give away, and we're going to tell you uh, exactly how you can qualify to win that giveaway. So um, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, the Facebook Live giveaway is going to be this. Marissa is going to provide us with a $45 wine tasting gift certificate. And I'm going to throw in two free tickets to Do Yo Live. Wow. So that all you have to do to qualify, it's actually very simple, is share this live post. And if you share this live post, on next Friday's show, we will actually announce who the winner is of that first Facebook Live giveaway. So if you want a $45 wine tasting gift certificate, and two tickets to do you live. Share this post with uh, with your friends. Uh, even if it's after the even after we're live and it's the recorded version, you will qualify to enter to win. In any case, uh, a lot of good stuff going on. Uh, so, Marissa, you know, it was your obviously your first time at Do You Live. We haven't ta really touched base uh, on on the live. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your Do You Live experience? What'd you think? Definitely was amazing. Um, I met a lot of empowering individuals at the conference. So not only did I speak about grill marketing, but I made a lot of awesome connections where I'm actually working with a lot of people who attended Do You Live to collaborate here locally, you know, doing charity events, thinking about how we can give back to the community by providing value from our expertise. So it wasn't just going to Do You Live to learn about the amazing, um, lessons that all the speakers provided, but yeah. there was a lot of networking that has benefited people in the Youngstown area and beyond. So That's awesome. So I think that one of the things that is very interesting that I'm hearing is kind of underestimated or maybe under or a little bit naive from my perspective is the networking opportunities that the conference presents. Absolutely. Um, even just having a 45 minute hour lunch um, down at of the local businesses that sponsor Deal Live, I met at least seven people that I still keep in great contact with. <laughs> that that is awesome. That like that that those are the stories that keep me going. Um, you know, we are off air. We won't we won't get into the details, but you know, in business, you know, there's two steps forward, one step back, and, and there's always going to be tough moments. So those are the those are the comments that really help me going, keep me going in the off season. Definitely. So thanks you. That that's great to hear, Nicole. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for dropping by, David. Obviously, he's going to be on in a few minutes. Um, Deanna Facillo, Melissa Nagy, thank you for dropping by as well. We really appreciate. We were with Marissa Surgery live from Luva Bella. Um, winery and restaurant in Lowellville, Ohio, which is awesome. Um, this place is absolutely fantastic place to come eat, lunch, dinner, uh, great wines, wine making supplies, all sorts of really good stuff. Um, and as we get into uh, talking to Marissa about how she got Redhead Wine Brands onto the shelves at Walmart, which is going to be really cool because I have no idea. Like, I got if, even if I have any product at all, how how that all come to fruition? Like, where'd that start? Definitely being connected to the Youngstown Business Incubator has been an amazing resource for me as a young business owner and Stephanie Gilchrist actually, um, she was in charge of the We Launch program but now um, Carmela Marie is in Carmella. charge. Yep. Amazing, amazing. Um, but Stephanie emailed everyone part of the We Launch program, hey, Walmart has an open call opportunity where okay. um, 
Four years ago, they announced that they are investing over $230 billion back into the U.S. economy by investing in U.S. manufacturing. Um, so this was their fourth open call event where you apply, I believe, around April or March. So I'll get back to you guys on, that, on those details. But if you make 60% of your product out of U.S sourced products plus 100% of it is made in the USA, okay. you qualify to um, apply for the opportunity to pitch Walmart in person at their Bentonville, Arkansas home office. So pause there for a second. So they have this open casting call. In order to even get on the playing field, though, you obviously had to put something together that caught their interest. What what was the content or the mechanism in email? Was it a, a video presentation? What did you do to get the, the opportunity to pitch? Yes, great question. They have a digital application where you fill out a little bit about your business, who you are, what your business is all about, and past sales just to so, show that you have traction, you already have customers. Yep. And um, they also ask for photos of your product. Really? And they talk about, um, well, they ask, for you to describe your target market, etc. So they're really diving deep in this application to make sure that there's a need, there's a market, and they're not gonna waste your time. Because essentially, if you get accepted to the open call program, they want to buy from you. Yeah. That and is an amazing feeling. Any any idea of how many applications did they did they ever divulge like the total number of applications that they kind of sift through or um, I'm not sure. I could maybe reach out and find out, but I know there's probably a lot because Walmart is a <laughs> yeah. national, international company. It's Walmart. I mean, well, I, I, yeah. bet, I imagine the stack's like this. Most likely. Yeah. And I know about 500 businesses pitched this year, but there was about 750 meetings because say you have a sponge that you're selling, you might be in the home department and maybe um, the mechanical department or kitchen, whatever. So you're going to be talking to multiple buyers and you might have multiple departments that your product is going to be represented in or just maybe one really believes it's better here. Right. So you could get a lot of traction and opportunity just with talking to these Walmart buyers. And even if you go to the meeting and don't get an immediate yes, they give you tips on why you didn't get accepted okay. and how you can come back next year or when you're ready to potentially get that opportunity. So. So Marissa Sergi, owner of Redhead Wine Brands, um, a duo liver, ran a breakout session for us, was super well received and talking about guerrilla marketing and branding. And so the, um, your content up to that point that you pushed out would, was typically a lot of social media content to that point. Do you think it's, that's something that they looked at too? They, I mean, they probably looked at everything, the business model, the revenue model, the product, some of your, some of your uh, online presence. Is that something that you're aware of that they looked at? They definitely looked at my digital presence and who I am as a person, as, as a partner with a large company or any company. Your actions every day, even though it's not maybe relating to your business, you're representing them in a direct and indirect way. Right. So I have no doubt they looked. And having an engaging social media strategy is always a benefit when you're trying to grow your business. So you know, if you are uh, tech savvy or you're not, you know, there's always ways to improve, like going to do a live or you know, tuning in these videos. But yeah. um, really important to really have strong marketing skills on all fronts when you're dealing with a company such as Walmart. Cool, so in a, in a second here, we're gonna talk about the second phase of that after Marissa got accepted, then putting the pitch together for the open call. But in the meanwhile, we are running our first Do Yo Live Facebook contest giveaway. All you need to do is share this post to qualify. We will announce our winner next week on next week's show. Um, you're gonna get an opportunity to win a $45 wine tasting gift certificate here at Louvabella. Yes. And two tickets, one, two, dose, my uh, uh, dose tickets to, to Do You Live in 2018. My, uh, my six-year-old came home the other day and said, Dad, we, were, we had Spanish class today, so I've been working on my Espanol with him. Because oh, so if cute. he knows more than me, then, then that's going to be, that, that would be embarrassing. <laughs> anyway, so getting back into it. Um, so now you got the notification and... No pun intended, but bottle pop, bottle corks start getting popped, and it's like, hey, high five, and we made it into Walmart, the open casting call. 
Now, all of a sudden, you have to put together a pitch oh, to go there. So talk to us about that process as well. The pitch prep was probably the most stress that I've experienced so far because, one, I didn't really expect to get this opportunity in the first place. Just, you just have this attitude like, oh, you have no chance, but you know, you have to change that attitude and have more positivity in your life. But I got in and I immediately reached out to um, China Thompson. She yep. um, helped me a lot with my social media and she introduced me to um, John Rossi, who's a marketing professor down at Wa Youngstown State University. Yep. And it's like, hey, John, this is what China and I are working on for this Walmart open call opportunity. What are your thoughts? And John, I'm telling you, has so much knowledge. It's <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. He helped me analyze Walmart to make sure that I was a proper and prepared partner, making sure that I projected out my my sales to make sure that I could deliver on time in full. It's called OTIF, on time in full. So once you get a partnership with Walmart, you need to deliver your products on time and full. Never forget it because if you don't, they will take your business and kick you out because, yeah. you know, I don't blame them. You are dealing with people who are going to their store looking for a certain product, and right. if it's not available, you're disappointing the customer. The customer is so important, and that's something that I emphasize in my pitch as well, that I'm really looking at their customer to make sure that I am engaging with them and providing value as a Walmart qualified partner, but also, of course, analyzing other data and projections too, which was really beneficial. Yeah, and John, uh, John actually played a role in year one of Do You Live, where he was not only at the event, but um, we had met through Mike Ponticus, who is a Youngstown State University marketing professor, been a Do You Live committee member and creative director for us for two years now. And Mike introduced me to John, and we got together, and, and, and John was actually nervous for me at Do You Live one, because in the spring, of May of uh, 2016, we had this conversation, and like a lot of people that don't really understand content marketing as a strategy, they were, they, they were asking me about my advertising strategy, and I said, well, we're all self-published, we utilize a blog, social media, and email marketing. And right away, like, every one of those individuals like was like shocked, like you can't really build a business like that, and, and absolutely we have. And so John went away and he, he put together, unsolicited on my part, yep. like a 15-page analysis of my marketing and my sales and where we were at. And he actually then, I, I actually made me a little bit nervous um, when I read that. But I was like, no, I'm going to stay true north you know, to the plan. And there were a few things in there that, that were really beneficial. So that's a guy with a lot of depth and know-how. So you worked with him. Hey, Brandon, thanks for joining. Really appreciate it. Thanks for dropping by. Um, so you now, you know, you, you, you put together the pitch deck um, and now you're going down to Arkansas to, to do your presentation. How many people are in the room for something like that? Yeah, so you get exactly 30 minutes, no more, no less. And usually you have between one and maybe three or four people. For me, I had three individuals in my meeting. So yep. National Wine Buyer and two other Walmart associates who National uh, were, Wine Buyer to it. Wow. were very involved in the wine department, like merchandising, all the registration. Um, so luckily, I printed out many physical copies of my 45 page pitch deck. Yeah. And I had enough because I didn't know who was going to be in there. So I at least guess that we would at least have five I'm um, including myself so we were good with that and we just you know introduced ourselves and started going into the pitch and um, it was really positive I was so prepared because of John Rossi at Youngstown State University and all the other Youngstown individuals that helped me the YBI and um, other people associated with the Youngstown Business Incubator yeah that Although I was nervous because my first time pitching Walmart, I knew that I was providing value. I did my research and I had a lot of qualified supporting partners to help me get there. Yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't just me at all. It was like an army of people behind me really encouraging me to take that moment. That That is fantastic. So now when do you find out that you've... Um, 
that they've accepted or that they want to put you on the shelves? Like, is it like, are you hard closing in that presentation or it's like, we'll call you when we're ready? So I wasn't sure they have, so Walmart was amazing in making you feel comfortable and prepared. They had um, meetings before the open call pitch day where um, people who went through the open call process, uh, there's a company called 50 Strong that is from Lima, Ohio. They have all their water bottles available at Walmart. Amazing company. Um, the CEO addressed everybody, the 500 person crowd, on her experience yeah. and what to expect, what not to think, what to prepare for, etc. So that was helpful. But sometimes you get an immediate yes. Yeah, sometimes you have to go through the chain of people communicating, oh, um, Marissa's pitch was great, but maybe it needed an improvement here. So it was completely unknown to me. So the decision makers in my room told me yes, but for some reason I wasn't sure if it was like a yes, oh, yes. Oh, really? So I was like, so is that a yes? <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, yeah, and literally me and my, no my business partner, Bill, um, I don't know, we had like this moment of like is so much excitement that... Um, I was worried that I um, stepped beyond my professional boundaries, but you know, everyone's a person, everyone has their emotions, and they knew that for me as a young 23 year old winemaker, it was a big deal, and everyone was so happy. It was like a big celebration. No, that, that's amazing that you're yeah. there and like you, you find out. And you know, I say this all the time like, you know, you got to get better at celebrating the wins, and there's, there's nothing wrong with, um, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think that the, you know, the authenticity, the transparency, the realness is the fact that you're a human being. You know, you put everything that you've got into what you're doing and you're so passionate about it. And that's why people believe in why and what you do. And so when that moment happens, you know, you have to take a moment and celebrate the wins. And I, and I you know, you, you, you absolutely. And that's a really cool story. It, it was and it still is. And honestly... In our pitch, I believe I asked for only five Walmarts, just five to start, because I wanted to showcase we had sure. a concrete plan for the individual stores we analyzed, and you know I thought that was the opportunity, but we weren't really sure how much they gave us, but we didn't care because we got a yes, so we're like, oh my god, yay! Um, but a few weeks later, we found out that they were going to give us a chance for the entire state. No way. For 152 Walmarts. But the, the catch is that I had to go to each manager to ask them if they would be interested in carrying the product to make sure that everybody was on board since I'm a new company, which has been a great process in itself. But, you know, I only asked for five, but showcasing that I was genuine, did my research, yeah, yeah. had a stack of, you know, concrete evidence why I should have the opportunity, they gave me more than I could have ever asked for. That's amazing. So just any, for everybody listening, if you are conservative and you're really prepared and have a good plan, people will see that you're ready or could execute on something much larger. So um, definitely the tips that I've learned at Do You Live have been really important. <laughs> well, that, that's <laughs> cool. And uh, so first Facebook Live giveaway contest, You'll win a $45 gift certificate to a wine tasting here at Louvabella and two free tickets to Do You Live in 2018. Come get your skills on, get your networking going. Um, so we want to do that. All you have to do, oh, how do you enter? You share this post right here, whether it's live or recorded, and we will announce the winner on next week's show, which also next week, uh, we'll pause here for a moment. We've had some year-long sponsors. Valley Digital Services with WFMJ have been absolutely phenomenal to us. Um, Arkash Miri and Associates, healthcare benefits provider, which we're, we're coming into the open uh, network season for insurance. Um, so if you need health uh, healthcare insurance, they're a great port, uh, great organization to tap into. Socket Knoppet, um, which is Pontikas' name spelled backwards, has helped uh, with branding and design. We had Juggerbot uh, 3D uh, printing uh, with us for the better part of the year. Uh, so we uh, we have opened up our year-long sponsorships for 2018, and we're also going to be making those announcements um, next week and the following week after that, which is really exciting, a new crop um, of people that are coming in for that year-long sponsorship, and we appreciate those people that supported us, obviously, through year one. So share this post, qualify yourself to win a $45 gift card 
for a wine tasting here at Lou Vabella, where we're live today with Marissa Sergi, owner of Redhead uh, uh, Wines, and then also um, two free tickets to do you live in 2018. And how much of a value is that? <laughs> Tell them they could win no, seriously, hundreds it's... of dollars in prizes by sharing this post. So our full price ticket is $225. So my math on the spot is that's 450 Ish. bucks. Yeah, and a good time, and you can't have yeah. a price on a good time, right? You can't, you, exactly, so take advantage of that. Um, so now your product is on the shelf at Walmart, which feels pretty amazing, and then I'm seeing autographed bottles at Giant Eagle, which I think is really cool. I didn't want to have to go to Giant Eagle to get that bottle. <laughs> hey, I, you could have just texted me, Dennis. You know? I know, I know. So talk to me though, like now, you're, now your product's on the shelves, at Walmart, like that was just the first part of the job, like was getting that approval. Now what? Like there's there's a lot of hustle and effort that needs to take place, right? I mean, you've got product you got to move. Yes. Um, honestly, I'm working on it still. I am trying to learn what's working, what's not working. And every day I'm trying to brainstorm new ideas, bounce things off of other individuals yeah. on my team or outside my team. And it's just going to be a really interesting grill marketing and traditional marketing effort because... I know people are enjoying the wine, just learning about who I am and what the product is about outside of my current markets because I, you know, I'm trying really hard to get involved as much as I can in the community and really get the story out there. But you know, in a can place you, far... Can you take a moment, by the way, for those of you that are new to Redhead Wines and also Marissa, can you tell them a little bit about your wine company? Absolutely. So I actually started... By accident, I was 19 years old, and I designed a wine label at my parents' winery, Luva Bella, just to really do something creative, as I really enjoy being creative. And I surveyed the shelves at um, the local Giant Eagle, see what labels appeal to me. So that's why I discovered how to create the redhead label. Actually, I think I have a bottle over here. Um, is Which, my rose. by the way, I love the summer rose. So, I mean, it was like that's. It, I mean, not summer, but the rose. Yeah. Was, Amazing chill this summer. I absolutely love it. This is actually the rosé, so you can see the label. It's um, very bold, sophisticated, but it has three simple colors. And that's something that I really wanted to do with, you know, the branding. Really simple, but yet eye-catching. And then I created a wine that I really enjoy. Very smooth and fruity with a light spice, at least for my red blend, which is 60% Zinfandel and 40% Chilean Carmenere. And, you know, recently I created this new product in the spring with the dry crisp, refreshing, yet fruit forward rosé. But it all started as my capstone project to graduate from Cornell University's viticulture and enology major, which is a science of winemaking and grape growing. And one thing led to another. I wrote a business plan for the capstone project and entered in competitions to get that critique from other entrepreneurial minded people, just to make sure I was putting my best foot forward. And I got a lot of positive feedback, so I thought, Maybe I could do this as a real business. So um, I graduated spring of 2015, worked full time at a large privately owned winery in California, and I always pondered I loved that job and all that I did there, but I didn't want to be 80 years old looking back on my life and regretting that I didn't take the risk yeah, to yeah. make Redhead happen. So that was ultimately why I left. I just didn't want to live in regret. And right. here we are today, full <laughs> it's, swing. And, and it is an amazing story. And I think that the one thing that you, the one thing that I would impress upon you, um, and I think you, you do a very good job of it. <clears throat> I think you do a great job of it. But the one thing that I, I, you know, because you say this over and over again every day, is that um, you can never continue to say the pitch enough because people, you, you don't under, you know, they, they don't recognize. You have to continue to build that brand awareness yeah. at all times. Like there's still people today that you know we we have left a market untouched with Do You Live yeah. to where you know like oh everybody knows Do You Live and and there's still a ton of people that don't know about the Do You Live brand and that we have a marketing conference. So don't ever feel like it's getting exhaustive talking about your one. Yeah, that's true. You just right? you can't assume, and um, you always try to create that awareness a great point point. and you're doing that you're doing a lot of that through social media and Instagram right yes how's that going really well you know I just sometimes I feel like it's a challenge occasionally because I don't want to be redundant I want to provide unique value to my current customers and people who enjoy following the brand but also I need to continually educate 
my new customers and people are really interested in learning about Red Head. So I'm working on that balance and dichotomy. I love your Instagram strategy. I think it's so super cool. Like I, I think that the way that you integrate events, like it was um, Labor Day and I saw pictures of the wine with the flag. It's just like really cool and creative of how you're pulling that together. Thank so I, I love that. And there's a ton of engagement right now on Instagram. Um, there's some struggles out there with Facebook right now that I'm going to talk about as we transition between yourself and David. But before we do that, um, we are here live with Marissa Sergi today from Luva Bella Wines in Louisville, Ohio, um, restaurant and winery. Let's talk about Cornell University. You just got home from New York because you are an entrepreneur in residence there. Yes. Talk a little bit about that program. Yes, I was so excited when the Pillsbury Institute of Hospitality Entrepreneurship within the hotel school at Cornell asked me to be an entrepreneur in residence because when I was an undergrad, I looked up to everyone in the EIR program. They had lots of experience, were very kind and willing to help other individuals like myself in that moment trying to start a business during my undergrad. And now that I am one, it was a little intimidating because I'm, I know I'm young and I was a little nervous that I wouldn't be able to provide value to those who signed up to meet with me. I, I think I met about... 10 people over a span of 48 hours. Yeah. And I actually provided a lot of value. Everyone's really happy. I had a lot sure of unique perspectives. Absolutely. But you don't realize how much you learned until you have to kind of help others kind of learn what they need to do. So it was really exciting to me that I got those genuine reactions from the individuals I met. It doesn't have to be in the food and beverage industry. I met somebody that wanted a law startup or virtual reality. And I was able to still at least take the experience I've had running Redhead to point them in a unique or direction that may really help their business. So it, it was a really wonderful opportunity because I really enjoy helping people and the entrepreneur in residence program was perfect for me to really get involved on the ground level. People that don't even have an idea but want to have one or they have an amazing idea but don't know how to scale it. So yeah. it was a great opportunity for me to kind of get on that ground level and be someone relatable. I'm, I'm young, I just graduated there and I wanted to showcase that they can do it as long as they put their mind to it and ignore people who are saying, no, you can't. Because the moment you take that negativity and let it eat you alive, it, it really puts a damper on your your excitement and I, motivation. I will, I will tell you, we had a, we had uh, Joe Vericali uh, on from Send Source and Love This Place app about two weeks ago, and, and as an entrepreneur, he started to talk about you know the the mind even the psych the psychological impact of of scaring yourself out of doing it and yeah. it's so true and and I think that you are I I know that you are just a fantastic example. And, and person that these people can, can relate to um, because of, I think, your youth and because of the fact that you're not at this level that's you know so unobtainable, but it is an obstacle and a challenge to start a business, but yet you know, you're know you on your way. And that's something that they can see and they can latch onto and gravitate towards. Um, listen, share this post right now. If you do, you'll qualify to enter a $45 gift certificate for wine tasting here at Louvabello Restaurant and Winery get down on some of this awesome redhead wine, um, some other great stuff. And then also you qualify to win two free tickets to Do You Live in 2018. We'll announce those winners next week. Share this post. Uh, and that's how you qualify to do it. So now, um, what is, uh, what's next? What are you, what are, I mean, you're obviously, you're, you're working on um, traction with, you know, your brand. What are you, what are you doing locally? I know that there was some recent nonprofit charity stuff that that was um, that I've saw online yes actually tonight the Angels of the Easter Seals is having a fundraiser here at the Mount Carmel Society in Lowville sweet and I'm gonna be there giving wine tastings and supporting the event with redhead wine and I'm really excited to be able to you know, do something like that tonight and really try to benefit the community uh, through that effort awesome and if I'm going to get redhead wines locally um or even i mean we got people that are even columbus uh cincinnati they, where, where am i going to go shopping to get redhead wine yeah so columbus i just entered kroger and some walmarts i'm not in a lot of them yet just because it's a new opportunity but i'm sprinkled around so if you guys are looking for it you can comment on this post and i'll help you find it but um in the northeastern parts of ohio most giant eagles carry it um a lot of walmarts are now 
pairing Redhead up here. And, of course, Ruley Brothers locally, Sammy Quick Stop, some Shell Gas Station. Bueller's. 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 Bueller's Fine Foods, Acme Fresh <clears throat> Market, um, Larry's drive through a lot of amazing partners. And it's on <laughs> Redhead Wine is right now on tap at the Magic Tree here in Boardman. That is awesome. So, lots love, of awesome Love that. And, and, and it is definitely entering... Red wine drinking season. I drink red wine all year round, and it doesn't even really matter with my food pairings. I've gotten a little bit of whites, but for the most part, I'm a red wine person. And like with the weather, with the, the coolness in the air, it is perfect time yes. to to get a bottle of red wine on your table and celebrate it with Marissa Sergi and all the great things that she's doing. Appreciate your support. Um, it means everything in the world to us and to me that you know you did a breakout session and that you shared the content. And just really appreciate that endorsement as well, Marissa. So I thank love you. working with you, Dennis. So anytime. <laughs> thank you. It's, it's been great. All right. So here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna do, we're gonna do a little transition, a little bit a new thing for the DLI Marketing Show. So we're gonna pull in David Moliterno, who is has. We're gonna talk a little bit about his business. We'll let him talk about his business. Absolutely. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you so much. Dennis. It's awesome. Thank Looking you. Looking forward to watching this. Live, <laughs> yeah. live inception. Live inception. So here's the deal, too. Here's two things I want to talk about. David, come on up. We're going to introduce you here in a second. Joey, thank you for dropping by. Really appreciate it. Share this post. Qualify to win a $45 gift certificate for wine tasting here at Louvabella Restaurant and Winery. We just got done with Marissa Sergi, um, owner of Redhead Wine Brands, and you'll be able to taste that. Plus, you'll win you'll get a chance to win two free tickets to Do You Live in 2018. That's a $450 value. All you have to do is share this and then we'll announce it next week. In the meanwhile, uh, before I jump into David Moliterno here, a um, couple recent developments in Facebook land and also Instagram land. Uh, number one, change to Instagram this past week. If you go live on Instagram, uh, you have to update to version 20. If you update to version 20, uh, you will notice in your stories when you go live that you can actually split the screen and actually pull somebody in that's viewing with you in a top and bottom view, which is a really cool thing, a really inter interesting feature, a lot of use cases. The second thing is, is happens to be with the organic reach completely almost being dead on Facebook as it wasn't already. Um, drama everywhere. Publisher feeds going into the Explorer. If you look on your desktop and on your on your phone, it's buried. But there's an Explorer feed and there's your news feed. Uh, in your news feed, you continue to get your information from your friends, puppies, kids, uh, political rants, yay, and all that good stuff. What we're going to talk about today. Um, but on the other hand, there's news publishing. Um, information going to the Explorer feed. So you may notice that. And from a brand perspective, it's only going to start to impact more and more. So we're paying very close attention and we're on top of that. And we'll give you more information on how you can combat that. One of those ways is with live. In any case, David, thank you for dropping by. Thanks really for appreciate having me, Dennis. that. Um, David is a Do You Liver. He was at the conference this past summer. And so why don't we build some context around this and tell people exactly what you do, what your day job is, and we'll start there. So I am uh, in marketing because I am in sales. I have an insurance agency in Poland, Ohio, um, right in the center of town there. Um, I have been selling, and uh, I, I say selling, but I, I have been an insurance agent for right. six years now. Right. Um, What's the name of the, well, who are you with, by the it, way? It is uh, American National. American National. With. Um, but I don't, I don't say I'm selling. I don't want to be the guy that, you know, Hey, I just sold another policy. Or I just, you know, hey, I got you to, to buy something from me. Right. Uh, it's it's a relationship. It's a making sure that you are properly covered, that your future is taken care of, and that's uh, you know. On the other hand, when I'm talking about uh, running for trustee, that's the same thing I want to do for the community: is make sure the future of the community is taken care of. Right. Um, so, uh, health insurance? No. No. Life, auto, property, casualty. Business farms. Business farms. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I can think of much more. Do they insure that. the animals or the crops? We, we can do both. Um, animals, crops, property. Um, just, just the same as, you know, farms are businesses. Right. And livestock are, you know, are part of that business. So if a herd of cattle go down, I'm insured as a farmer. I'm getting, I'm, I'm taken care of. I'll check with the claims adjuster. Okay. <laughs> Don't want to give any, way, any false information no, away. Right. No. So that's good. We're going to go back. We're going to check. 
I don't have cows. I was just asking, yeah. just like out of curiosity. Yeah, I didn't think you have cows. You're usually riding around on your bicycle. Well, we have an acre of property, and if it's something that maybe as you run for Boardman Township trustee, and I technically live in Boardman Township, that maybe it's, there's something that we could do to, to check into the zoning laws to see if I could have a, a head of cattle Cur or two. Currently, you can. Okay. Um, the, 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 the current administration is looking at changing those zoning laws. And what's really interesting, too, um, backyard chicken farming has become a huge thing. Like, if you walk into a room of 30 people and you generally ask them if they know anybody or if they are a backyard chicken farmer, you'll see like a dozen hands go up. It's bizarre. And what happened is, is a lot of communi communities, municipalities, cities were not prepared for that and the legislation has actually changed because those individuals are generally people that are willing to help to drive that change. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you want to get two free tickets to Do You Live in 2018 Digital Marketing Interactive Design Conference? Share this post, plus you will be qualified to enter a $45 gift certificate for wine tasting at Louvabella Restaurant and Winery. So here we go, uh, Blackburn Home. Hey Blackburn Home, what up? Thanks for dropping by and a college teammate of mine, Doug Meyer dropping by. Hey man, what up? Haven't seen you in a while, Doug. Hope you're doing well. And um, so, David, let's talk a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about insurance first. Okay. Um, and I know that you weren't really prepared to go too deep on that, but from a marketing perspective, what are some of the unique things that you've done that I I actually know of that I've, I've become a pretty big fan of the way that you've approached your marketing for your insurance agency? What are some of the things you've done? Can you be a little bit more specific? I mean, <laughs> okay. I'm I'm, I'm I'm everywhere. I am. Let's like, start. Like I said, it's, let's it's, start with the um, let's start with the car shows. Okay. So I, I uh, set up at. I have a couple car shows that I go to throughout the year. Uh, the company I represent does have a specialty product in classic cars. Right. Um, so the, the two go hand in hand. You know? So it made sense. It made just makes perfect sense to do that uh, relationship marketing. Yeah. Um, be where the people are. And, and then talk a little bit about your business networking night that it actually was just uh, this past, this past, past Wednesday, Wednesday, and it's generally the last Wednesday of the month. Yeah, so we, we, we also, um, talking about doing business insurance, making relationships with people, um, I partnership with Quaker Steak and Movement and Boardman, right. and we've been doing, it's the last Wednesday of every month, um, six till whenever people leave, right. um, you know, just open networking, stop in, usually, you know, 15, 20 people there. Um, and always different people, so it's it's a great way right. for business owners, sales professionals, um, community leaders to to get connected with you know other businesses in the area. Which is great too, because of the fact that a lot you know like there are networking groups, and we have our meetup.com um, for Youngstown Digital Marketing Meetup, and I do see a lot of new faces and some familiar ones, which is always a good thing. But at the same note, it sometimes networking groups become like therapy groups. <laughs> And so it's good that you've got that nice cycle, you know, you're cycling some people through. And what was the premise? Like, what was the genesis behind the reason why you wanted to do that event? Is it because you feel like there's the tie for the business insurance that you'll create the relationship along the way? I, I was looking at that on, on a much less selfish basis to start it. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those things where, you know, I, I'd been to networking groups in the past, different, uh, you know, lead, lead groups, that sort of thing. But they're all, you know, hey, you have to pay to join here. Hey, you have to do this. Hey, you have to do that. Hey, you can't join because we don't like you. Um, you know, I wanted this to be just completely open that, yeah. that anybody can come in. You know, there's three or four other insurance agents decide they want to show up and, and talk to people. I'm for that. Come on out, you know, right. join us, have a good night. Um, I figured you put them in a headlock maybe. <laughs> so. After the night's over, maybe. But uh, no, it's, it's, it's really, it's just a way to, yeah. and especially the, the community, you know, so so often we're hearing the you know people are going online, people are not using their local resources, right? Uh, and this is a way to hey, I didn't know you did that, or oh, you know, we we have businesses in the area that offer services that that people are are going other places. Totally, for. and and you know that's the big misnomer. Obviously, I have a digital marketing conference, but at the end of the day, utilizing the digital landscape to get me to sit next to somebody in person uh, is really the old end goal. So listen. We've got a handful of people that are on. If you have not shared this post, um, please do so because you'll qualify to enter two free tickets to Do You Live in 2018, which is a digital marketing interactive design conference attended by over 500 people in our first two years. 35 speakers have spoken at Do You Live. Four fantastic keynotes, four DJs, endless networking, 
Um, so if you and, 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 and Dennis is there, and I'm there, I'm there, and then um, yeah, I, I'm there, um, and then uh, a forty-five dollar gift certificate to a wine tasting at Louvabella Winery and Restaurant. All you need to do is share this. You'll qualify to enter, and next week on our show, we will announce the winner. All right. So let's talk politics. You are running for Boardman Township trustee. Trustee. Yes. Um, and so. What are some of the tactics that you've done as a board to, to, to get your name out there in the current political landscape? Well, I mean, there's the traditional put your name on a street sign. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and even, even you know, the whole political landscape, there's regulations on what you can, what you can't say, what I can, you know, I can't promise you anything. You know, there, there's lots of restrictions. Um, so two funny stories there. My, my kid ran for student council and he didn't win. And the young, young men that he ran against promised pancakes and extra time at recess. And he's reminded me daily that both of those things have not have, taken have place not yet. happened yet, no. Right. So you're not running on the pa pancake platform. I am not. I'm not going around. Uh, maybe ponies. but. Uh. In all seriousness, what are some of the things that you, know, that you are hoping to accomplish by becoming a trustee? Of, what do, first of all, what do the trustees of Boardman Township actually do? So they, they handle, they work with the township administrator and the um, fiscal officer to handle the, the budgets, the day-to-day, -day, um, and, and also work with the zoning and, and zoning board and zoning commission to really try to make, you know, and, and Boardman's slogan is, you know, a nice place to call home. Okay. That is the, the, the goal of the trustees. Now, there's three of them. Okay. So the idea is if one says no and the other two say yes, it's a, you know, there's that majority, gotcha. but, you know, under under the current administration, they, they, they work as a team. They 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 all say yes. Yeah. Um, and and one thing that I'd like to see is uh, not so much all in agreement. Let's bring in some new ideas. Let's you know let's try to, to hash things out and get right. get some new advancements going. I think it would be interesting if there were like four people, and then you could do like tag team wrestling to solve the problems. No, I, I'm I, I, no, but I, I, I know your point, and I've had a number of people say, "Well, why, why just three? Why, you know, why just three? Yeah, why makes not, sense. You know, let's let's keep it an, an odd number, but five. But yeah, no, five can bloat, and and you never get anything done. So no, that may, that makes complete sense. And we need young people stepping up. You know, look at the end of the day, like we're we're we're. I think that we're still still filling the hangover from last year's political ele uh, <laughs> election. No matter what side of the coin that you were on. Um, and it's left a it's left a tough taste in everybody's mouth because it's a, it is a tough job. Nobody there's not a lot of people that are wanting to step up and do it. And somebody that's young that wants to break through and bring some energy and some new ideas is admirable. Um, so the second funny story is I think the statute of limitations has passed. But when we were young, growing up <laughs> in Lowville, we helped clean up political signs maybe before election day. <laughs> Help, helped uh, clean them up. I, yeah, and then we, we nice and then we repopulated them all in one person's yard, <laughs> and then that prompted an arrest that I wasn't involved with um, that night. But I did get to see Kirk Gibson hit his walk-off home run uh, in Game Two of the World Series against the Oakland A's, which is. Um, in any case, I get very interested in the political sign world. So have you done signs? I have signs. I still have some available. Um, but And does that go with along with door knocking as well? So it's not just a sign in the yard, right? I mean, it's... I, I have been, you know, trying to find neighborhoods where, because um, the, the, the Board of Elections does supply, you know, here's, here's neighborhoods where we believe people are going to be voting more often yep. um, based on previous elections. Um, they have said that this is probably going to be one of the lowest turnouts in a long time. Uh, like you said, coming right off of a presidential election, yeah. a brawl, if you will. No, nobody wants to hear any more politics for a while. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm going door to door. I'm talking to people. I'm hearing their concerns. Um, and That's know. a tough job. That, now, name recognition, I think, is huge in this environment, especially in an election that's a small election, mm -hmm. because I, be I really believe that it does come almost down to a marketing contest. And, and, and that's the one thing I, I really wish... Um, it wasn't so much just, hey, I've heard that name before. Let me fill in I the agree. circle. Um, and, and, both and, voters need to be educated on, on what the issues are and who the, the candidates are. I, I absolutely agree. But the fact of the matter is this. When you walk into the poll, the signs that you see last sometimes resonate with you. Name recognition. Oh, I've known that person for X amount of years. So um, 
you have a you have a distinct advantage because there's less people voting. Um, mm -hmm. Online tactics, I think, in this current environment, for thirty, fifty, a hundred bucks, could populate information by targeting on Facebook to Boardman, Ohio, and and just dr and just running that ad specifically targeted at r folks in Boardman, Ohio, and even with some of the current changes to. Uh, Facebook on September 29th that said that they're going to take some political stuff out because if you've not heard, the Russians apparently <laughs> took out about $100,000 worth of advertisement in the hey, last Facebook election. should be happy about that, right? <laughs> I mean, like they didn't know. Anyway, um, so I think that you have a really awesome opportunity, if you're not already doing mm -hmm. that, to, to leverage that, are you? I, I have been. Um, you know, it, it's, it's very hard to judge. It's one of those things where um, talking about people, you know, in my generation, I don't know how many of them are even voting. I know it's it's, a, it's something that people say we want to, you know, we want to be involved in politics, we want to be involved in our community, um, but for for the big majority, I think a lot of the voters are the older generations. So maybe not the target that, that's being reached on Facebook. We have Andrea DePaolo and Valley Digital Services dropping by. Year-long sponsors of Do Yo Live, super appreciate that, and all of our year-long sponsors. We're getting ready to come up on um, the time of year where we announce year-long sponsors coming into uh, next year. Um, in any case, she says that she can help get the word out, so that's somebody that you should connect with. They're actually mm -hmm. running a small business Saturday um, uh, type of campaign that might actually come out. I believe it's probably going to come out before the election, so maybe that's something that you you connect with them on. Mm -hmm. Any case, you want a chance to win a forty five dollar gift certificate for wine tasting at Louvabella Winery and two free tickets to Do You Live in twenty eighteen. All you need to do is share this post right now, or if it's recorded, you could share it. You'll qualify to enter. We'll pick one lucky winner and announce it on next Friday's show. Um, Speaking of which, we were talking a little bit last night at our, our digital marketing meetup that you've gone live a couple times. Mm -hmm. um, has that been for insurance or has that been for the trustee? That, that's been more so for the trustee race. Uh, Personal page or, or, or did you create a trustee page? I, I have a trustee page out there and I've been using the trustee page and then sharing it to my friends on my personal page. Um, I, I try to avoid so much of the Facebook Live on the insurance side just because it's a very regulated industry and I don't want to slip up and say something you know, that someone will hold, hold me for. You could get Stay, stay Sassy Wide Town's already taken. <laughs> if you don't know the inside joke, Ralph Fajak who drops by on this show and, and is out there in a heavily regulated industry of financial has done a fantastic job of keeping his name out there and, and really never at the end of the day even talks about um, financial. So he's a great guy to watch his social media. Um, and figure out how, how you play that. The second thing, though, it's kind of tough. It's tough when you're going one on one with, with the camera yes. on Facebook. Tough talking to yourself. Uh, I mean, I do it quite often, but, but doing it live just uh, yeah. you know, doesn't mix. Carrying that. Uh, you know, I also like this coming down the stretch because if you've not built up a significant profile with your, your, your Facebook page, and there are advertising um, opportunities that you can utilize with the Facebook page. I think that the personal profile of going live, if you don't have that big audience, can really help to benefit you and set you apart in terms of, you know, when I go live from my own Facebook profile, I tend to get a lot of people that jump on that one as well, mm -hmm. and I mix them up because I do feel that people need, you know, look, you've got your professional network, you've got your personal network, but a lot of business comes from the personal network as well. Yeah, and, a, and a lot of your votes are gonna end up coming from the personal network that shares that, that's gonna help you get the word out. Mm -hmm. um, Instagram, are you Instagramming? I am Instagramming. Um, I took a picture of you and tagged you before we started this, so great. get to see that later. That is awesome. Now, are, are, you, are, are you also doing things though that from an election perspective that can help impact that, you think? I'm trying to get some information out with those pictures again you know Instagram is a a picture in time yep um, with you know hashtags whatever else you may put in there but um, I'm sensing that this election is going to have an older demographic and a smaller voting population so you might miss that opportunity with um, people but in the same note I, I would I would spend two hours photographing iconic places in Boardman, Ohio for the rest of the afternoon and then use that frequently over the next 
two weeks because I, I literally do believe that over this last two weeks it's going to come down to you know at the end of the day the name recognition the mm -hmm. branding and you know and and also obviously if you could keep that name recognition somebody buys into why you're doing it with some of the things that you stand for on the platform you know you'll end up winning them over mm -hmm. now when you win yes I, I, when uh, when when you win as in win do you have any plans to continue on to use social media in any capacity? No, oh, ab absolutely. I mean, I, I, I pester people online all, all, the, <laughs> all the time. I, I, uh, I, I do know that the, um, I've, I've talked to the township administrator. Um, Boardman Township does have a, a Facebook page, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's managed by a third party. They don't respond to posts, and I know that the township has said that they have a, a social media, um, you know, policy in place yep. of what, you know, especially certain departments, what, what can and cannot be posted. So I, I know when that comes, you know, I'll, I'll have to take a look at, you know, some, some of what I'm posting and make sure it stays within their policies. Yeah. So, um, David Moliterno, uh, American insurance, American national, American national also running for Boardman Township trustee talking a little bit about use of social media to win this upcoming election. There's a lot of political um, candidates that are running right now, and when I, for the life of me, we've had literally to run the free world. We've had two presidents in back-to-back -back terms now, in in the first Barack Obama, President Barack Obama term, Facebook, and the president and President Donald Trump, Twitter, both very very much one of the reasons why they were able to win elections. And I look at the local political landscape and I'm, I never ceases to amaze me that, you know, I see the signs, mm -hmm. but I don't see the consistency with delivering content online, um, connecting with the voter base, Facebook Live. Like if I was running for office, I would literally go Facebook Live every day and connect with the voting population. Mm -hmm. um, I would connect with them on Instagram, whether I think they're there or not, and I would literally use that. And then, sadly enough, you know, if you look at what's going on, like they're having debates, and last night they had one at Poland High School, and the judge, the judge race that's gotten a little bit out of control, um, they didn't need, they don't need to go there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I hate to say that, but they could literally like turn the camera on and just do their own Facebook Live like every day up until they, you know, they get to the election, or they can call yeah. me. I'll sit down with them and. Well, and, Actually, and, I, I don't know if I would, but I, I don't, I, I've stayed out of political. Like, I'm not, I'm, I'm giving advice on how to run a political campaign, not necessarily endorsing candidates, except for two people, you and uh, Anthony Latanzio, who's a write-in vote, who I like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so, so as far as those, like, you know, um, town hall meetings, those public forums, uh, Boardman Civic, Civic Association did one, uh, it's probably been about a month ago, and... You know, packed house. It was over at uh, the Boardman Park. Um, the The event was probably two hours. You know, listening to candidate after candidate after issue after issue. Right. And if you weren't there, what you see is the the newspaper prints up a you know one paragraph article about you know these people spoke, and right, not much more. Now I, I understand your point of you know if I go on Facebook Live every day, people are going to hear that. But how am I going to make sure the, the right people hear that? Well, back up. It is, it is important. Like, if you got an opportunity to connect, connect wherever you can. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's the same thing with this. Like, we do Facebook Lives every Friday. We do Do Your Live Dailies. I'm not worried about – I mean, I, I want the right audience, but at the end of the day, like, the people that are on here may not come to Do Your Live, but maybe they'll take away some valuable information. It doesn't matter to me because – it matters to me. <laughs> I love the fact that you're on right now. But what it matters to me is that – I continue to keep the at bats coming mm -hmm. and the content that people are gravitating and getting interested in. Eventually, I'm going to have the right people and the right audience within that people. And then, you know, like Marissa's story to, um, to Walmart was a pathway through, an organ through the YBI. Like, mm -hmm. you just never know where it's going to come from. So, I, that's why I say that, you know, if, and, and then it might propel you, it might get you invited. So, and then if the newspaper doesn't write the, the, the depth of the story, then you're going to be mad about the fact that, well, I was out here and I was one of the people that spoke and they didn't cover me. So take matters in your own hands and try and control that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for dropping by today.
We really appreciate it. Anthony, I just dropped your name, man. Share this post. And the reason why I want you to share this post is that you will get into our first Facebook contest giveaway. You'll get a chance to win a $45 gift certificate for wine tasting at Louva Bella Winery in Louisville, Ohio. And you'll also qualify to win two free tickets to Do Yo Live Digital Marketing Interactive Design Conference in 2018. Talking with David Moliterno about some different ways to connect with uh, his constituency as he's running for Boardman Township trustee. I had another person call me. Um, I'm becoming like a political advisor a little okay. bit. Yeah. Um, they, they asked me about Facebook Live strategy. You know, they, they said, you know, what do you think? What's the right amount? Should I go live? Should I do this? And I said, absolutely. You're running for political office. Mm -hmm. Connect with your voter base. Um, you know, when you're done with that, you can target that in, in, your, in your, voting, uh, your voting area. And I think that the big thing is too, and I talked with Anthony Latanzio, uh, who's running for Poland uh, City Council. He's a write-in vote, by the way. Um, is that after you go live, after you get this, I think that it creates a whole level of transparency in, in, in things that we've never actually seen to this point. Mm -hmm. um, whether, whether it's city council meetings that are for public record that should be Facebook Live. Um, I think that mayors of cities should do a weekly, you know, they do, they've done weekly radio shows. They should be doing a weekly Facebook Live of what's going on in their, their, their voting area. Um, you know, you look at the Youngstown mayoral race. I see nothing. Like, I see, like, static posts. Mm -hmm. I see, like, you know, information. But, like, if you really want to connect, I, I'm, I'm, like, bullish on, on obviously, the live streaming application. No, yeah. No, I, and I, I've seen, I can't say that I've seen anybody who is a newcomer to a political position doing the Facebook Live. But I've seen in other communities where current trustees or current uh, you know, administration are doing those. Um, you know, so, so I know there are people out there that are, get, are getting out there. Um, I just don't know and, and not why to it's be not as much as yeah. you would think it would be. I, I know, I hear you. And you know, the funny thing is too, our, in our governor race, Joe Schiavone, my doppelganger. Mm -hmm. So anybody that's Italian and that's bald and um, as good looking as Joe and I <laughs> get mistaken for each other all the time. <laughs> um, but uh, you know we've got we've got Joe running, and uh, I make that I kind of make that joke. But you know what an awesome way I think mm -hmm. to uh, you know to take advantage of a of a platform. Um, what else? What, what else? Yeah. Any 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 anything else you got going on? You you want to ask me about? Yeah. I wasn't ready for questions. I mean I. All right. Well, listen. Give this guy a look. You're in Boardman, Ohio. Give give David uh, 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 an opportunity. Um, you know I've known David now through. Um, actually, I think it was your networking group that I came to first, but uh, coming to Do Your Live, appreciate your support um, as well. We announced our August 2nd, 2018 is the date of Do Your Live 2018. And if you don't share this post, um, which I don't know why you wouldn't because you can win two free tickets to Do Your Live in 2018 and a $45 gift certificate to wine tasting here at Louva Bella Winery and Restaurant in Louisville, Ohio. Um, you could buy a hundred dollar ticket right now, super early bird tickets for Do You Live in 2018, which is also a steal. That's a 55% savings. You were at Do You Live? I was. Yeah. Um, the good, the bad, the great. Give. You took a great selfie of me when I was state trying to take a picture with the guys from Purple Film. That, that's why you don't give me your phone. <laughs> so, but anyway, why don't you give me some testimony? Well, no, it was a, a great event. Um, you know, and and. Like I said, I, you know, in, in my industry, I am a, a people person. I, I, I want to get face to face with people. Um, your event was a great, you know, way of doing that. 200, 300 people there um, between the, the, the couple days that it uh, occurred. Um, Jim Presswell spoke. Um, I know everyone loved that. He's always been a great speaker. Right. Um, it, the other good thing, uh, you know, your keynote speaker was actually a keynote speaker at a, another event I had been to. So to be able to bring in that, that uh, caliber of a speaker right. um, to this area, you know, when I, I know, you know, the conference I was at had thousands of people, you know, for, for her to, to say, yes, I'll come to Youngstown, you, you have to have some, you know, some pool there to, to, to get that to happen. So <laughs> I don't know about that. You know, we were really lucky in year one. Joe Polizzi from Content Marketing World legitimized us, one of the top people in the world at what he does. And by him being our keynote in year one, really gave us a lot of street cred. 
And then I give him the poor me from Youngstown speech. So, you know, I mean, we're building something here. And we do have a lot of fun, inter energetic, uh, great things going on. So, um, you know, appreciate that support as well. Otherwise, everybody have an amazing weekend. I think we're going to grab some lunch yes. here at Luva Bella and hang out for a little while longer. Thank you for dropping by. And um, share this so you qualify to win the two free tickets to Do You Live and also the $45 gift certificate to Luva Bella Winery in Lowville, Ohio. Take care, everybody.